well, but I think what I do, I just wait, I wait two or three minutes just to allow more people to come because we've only just, we've only just opened. So I might start in about two or three minutes time. Just to give people a chance to log in. Okay, I think I'll start. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm Kevin Burke. I'm a lecturer in statistics in the Department of Mathematics and, St and Statistics. So you're all very welcome to uh, today's open day on uh, the whole open day, but also this session in particular, which is on maths and physics. Uh, I'll be joined online by a number of our course directors. So we'll have Eberhard Meyerhofer, Norma Bargri and, and Ian Clancy. So you'll have a Q&A uh, chat there where you can you can ask any questions and your questions can be just general questions um, that you have or they can be questions that are based on things that 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 we're talking about. Just so it can be related to stuff we're talking about or just general questions you have in advance already that you want answered. So you can just pop them into the chat at any time and, and we'll answer those questions for you. Um, the way this is going to run, I just have a few slides to start things off and give you an idea of the different courses that we run. And then we have a number of, 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 of current students and, and graduates from our programs who are going to tell you a bit more and I'll, I'll introduce them in just a minute. So the three um, CAO choices that we're talking about today are LM058, which is financial mathematics, LM124, which is the mathematics common entry and LM125, which is the physics common entry. So in terms of the CAO, those are the three things that you'll be interested in. Now they lead to a variety of different degrees, but um, these are the these are the three things that will be on your CAO. Uh, to give you an idea of the points, they all tend to be in the 400s. The one which has the most points that varies from year to year, and that's important. Uh, I'll come back to that in just a second, uh, because because there are some overlaps between these courses that are that are worth being aware of. <clears throat> Entry requirements, well, all, all courses in you will have standard entry requirements, which I won't mention, but the specific ones of interest to, to these courses are that the mathematics ones, LM058 and LM124, they both require a H3 in mathematics, whereas the physics common entry requires a slightly lower level of maths H4, but it also requires a H4 in one of physics, physics with chemistry, applied mathematics, engineering or chemistry. In terms of the course structure, financial maths, you, you start as financial maths and you finish as financial maths. So it's fairly well uh, structured in advance. Uh, there are some electives, but basically that's a, a, a direct path to financial maths. With maths common entry, you have some choices. The first one I mention is you can choose to do mathematical sciences and that splits into mathematics or statistics and, and data analytics. Now I'm talking about this first just because there's a there's a lot of overlap between financial maths and the math science option. And that's important to note because whether you're interested in finance or not, if you want to do maths in UL, you should definitely put both of these LM058 and LM124 on your CAO because there's a huge amount of overlap between these maths um, these maths courses and actually it's also worth noting that once you come into the into UL it is actually possible for for us to move you between between degrees if you really really want to and as I say it's just important to be aware of that because the one which has the most points varies year on year so it would be a pity say just to put financial maths down and maybe you don't get it and then you don't get anything so it's always good to put the two of them down because the, the points do vary. Now, mathematical sciences is not the only choice coming out of the common entry. You also have economics and maths, which is 50% economics modules and 50% mathematics. 
and you have mathematics and physics, which is 50% maths and 50% physics. So the ones I've colored in green here, they're completely run by the maths department, whereas economics and maths is split between the maths department and the economics department, and maths and physics is split between the maths department and the physics department. Maths and physics then, uh, you can also get to that through the physics common entry. So the physics common entry gives you applied physics, which is a purely physics degree, or you can go to the maths and physics degree. So there are some overlaps here, as you can see, as I've said already, financial maths and math science have a lot of overlap. Um, there's other things to be aware of. Say, if you're interested in doing physics, then it's a good idea to pick the physics common entry, but also the maths common entry, because again, if the physics common entry has higher points than the maths common entry, as it did last year, uh, you would have gotten physics common, sorry, you'd have gotten maths common entry, but not physics common entry. So it's a good idea to keep your options op open. If you pick both of them, you can still get into physics through the maths common entry. Uh, or similarly, if you're worried that you may not achieve the H3 in maths, there's a slightly lower level of maths required for the physics common entry, but you can still choose to do maths and physics. So you can still go and do maths that way as well. So there's a, there are some overlaps there worth, worth being aware of. And ultimately it's important if you want to do maths or, or physics in UL, then you should really put all three of these things on your CAO. So that's financial mathematics, mathematics common entry and physics common entry. So obviously you'll have your own preferences. If you're more interested in physics, you put this one first. If you're more interested in maths, you put one of these two first and, and so on. But you should put all three on if you want to do maths or physics in UL. And the last thing to say is that your choices here are guaranteed. So the maths common entry, in your first year, you choose whether you're going to do math science, economics and maths, and maths and physics. And in the physics common entry, you choose whether you're going to do applied physics or, or maths and physics. That happens in the first year. And those choices are guaranteed, unlike in other com common entry programs where there, uh, some of the degrees are capped. And so then it's performance based whether you get your choice. Whereas in our program, you are guaranteed your, your, your choice. So that's, so that's good to know. Uh, that's pretty much all from me. Uh, just we're going to then go to our, our different speakers. So, so just a quick overview. We have two financial maths students speaking. So Ian Kelly and Sirish O'Neill, who are both in their fourth year. Then we have Ellie Fallon, who is a graduate of, of mathematical sciences. She graduated in 2019, currently doing a PhD. We have Karen O'Sullivan, who is a graduate of economic and math, economics and mathematics. She graduated in 2019 and is now working with First Derivative. Uh, Michael Keyes is a previous graduate of Maths and Physics from 2018 and is working for OnSemi. And we have Robert Guest, who's currently doing Applied Physics and is in his third year. So we have a good mix of different current students and graduates who've, who've gone down different paths. And this should give you a really good idea of um, the degree programs and what's possible coming from those. And, and as I said, um, we'll come to Ian now in just a second. At any time, if you have a question, just stick it in the Q&A and uh, we'll, we'll answer it straight away. Or if it's something you want one of the speakers to answer, we, we might wait and get one of them to answer it. But uh, anything you want to ask, just stick it in the Q&A. It doesn't have to be directly based on something someone has just said. You might have a general question that you, you had in advance of this session that you want answered. Um, we may not cover everything that, that you were thinking of, so just make sure if there's, if there's anything you're unsure of, stick it in the Q&A. OK, so I think now we'll, we'll switch over to Emer Kelly. So Emer, whenever you're ready, you could share your slides. My name is Emer Kelly and I'm in financial math in fourth year and then my previous employment was as a business analyst intern so this was my co-op and I did it in KBC in Dublin. So um, what led me to pick financial math in UL? So my favourite subject in school was always math. Sorry Emer, Emer sorry I think your slides haven't come through. Uh, okay. Yeah sorry to interrupt you. So 
There's just a little icon near the leave button to share. Yeah, I think they're coming through now. Yeah, perfect. So if you just make them full screen, and that way we'll. Um, yeah, perfect. Can you see them now? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, perfect. Thanks. What led me to pick financial maths and UL? So my favourite subject in school was maths. After researching mathematic courses around the country, I decided to pick financial maths because it boasted such a wide range of modules. And then these can be sectioned into general maths, statistics and probability and mathematical and statistical software. So just to give examples, general maths would be like calculus and linear algebra. And then you study statistics and probability throughout the four years. And then for mathematical and statistical software, you study things like R, Java, SPSS, stuff like that. So then after attending multiple university open days, I made the decision to pick UL because the campus facilities, um, so the buildings, the library, the gym, everything in it is really new. And then accommodation on campus. And then there's student housing really close. Like there's a lot of estates around the place that are majority students. So everything is in walking distance and stuff like that. And then in workplace, you or you get work placement in third year of every course in UL. So to continue on with that, um, cooperative education is work placement. So in second year, you write up your CV in the UL portal. So UL give you headings like teamwork, communication, problem solving, and you have to write um, like a paragraph on each that kind of relates to you. So then at the beginning of third year, these CVs are released to hundreds of companies across Ireland. And then throughout third year, you get called for interviews with different employers for roles they believe might suit you. So then to talk a bit about my co-op, I was a business analyst intern in the Life and Pensions Department, KBC. So I spent two days a week with the pensions team and then the remaining three with the life insurance team. So this allowed me to gain a great understanding of both departments. And then my tasks throughout placement, um, they changed like every week really. And then just to mention some, uh, testing needs analysis calculators and backend systems, analysis of all current PRSA customers, and then attending meetings and taking minutes. And then overall, co op really improved my communication, teamwork, and ICT skills within a professional environment. So then I'm just going to speak a bit about the final year project. So in third year, you're given a list of titles and then you select your favourites and put them in like word or whatever and then each title is eventually given out to each student so then it really is um, independent study so you work very closely with a supervisor who guides you in the right direction throughout the year so you meet your supervisor about once a week and they kind of go over your work just to make sure it's right and then they kind of help you decide where to go next in your project so then on the right is my project so it's leveraging returns so um, it's a study about the performance of ETFs, so exchange traded funds. Um, these are fancy investment opportunities that only have existed since 2006. And then a return is a percentage gain or loss. And ETFs promise to multiply returns of some assets on a daily basis. Um, larger returns typically mean larger risk. And then in my FIP, I use my undergraduate education in math, statistics and statistical software. So thanks. Thanks very much for that, Emer. Um, next, we we'll have Sirsha. So, Sirsha is in the same year as, as Emer. Sirsha's in fourth year doing financial maths. And um, just while you're sharing your slides, Sirsha, Sirsha's doing her find your project with me. And what's interesting there is just that Sirsha's FYP, unlike Emer's, is actually in the statistical direction rather than finance. So, even though they're both in finance, uh, Sirsha has made slightly different choices and that goes back to what I said, is it, which is there's overlap between these and um, whether you like finance or not, you should you should definitely pick financial maths and um, the maths common entry if you want to come and do maths in UL. Yeah, so I just... Sirsha, you're sharing, uh, but I don't see your slides. I can see your screen. I think you're, you're opening yeah, it there. Yeah, they just, they seem to disappear. It's down here, so I'll just get them up again. Oh, there. Yeah. Hopefully they'll, yeah. And so, if you make them full screen, then um, that'll be good. Yeah, so it's good now, yeah? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, so my name is Sarah O'Neill. I'm a fourth year student in financial maths. 
So I went to secondary school in Gork Main School. So that's where I start my leaving start then in 2018. I suppose one of the main reasons I chose UL was that I always really enjoyed maths at school and it was definitely my favourite subject. And both my parents had went to UL as well. So I'd always been around the campus at a young age. So then when I was making my choice for the CEO, I just took a look at all the courses in UL and I found financial maths. So I started with an interest in finance and an interest in maths as well. So I felt it to be the perfect course. Um, definitely the course has four different areas. So that really attracted me to the course because we get the experience in both maths, finance, statistics and computer software. There's also a small number of people in the course. There's only 25 of us. So it's a really good environment. Everyone's helping each other out and we're always willing to learn and find out different stuff off each other. I suppose as well, the lectures at UL are really helpful. And if you ever query or any worries, you could definitely go and talk to them. The facilities at UL are definitely one of the best in across the country. The accommodation, we have a world class library and as well, we've loads of facilities for clubs and societies. I was a member of the UL GA team, so the junior ladies football team, as well as UL tag rugby. And it's just a different experience because I never played tag rugby in my life before. So it's good to get the experience as well. I was also a member in the UL Women in STEM Society. So this is promoting girls in STEM, which is science, engineering, technology and maths. So this is a really good society as we get the opportunity to network. And as well, we get the opportunity to visit different companies like Regeneron. I suppose EMA is sort of taking you through the wide range of modules that are studied. So there's just more of them there. Um, for me, I suppose different to EMA, I had a big interest in statistics. Data analysis were always one of my favourite modules. So I definitely knew I wanted to go down that path. So another reason that I was really attracted to UL was the fact that we get a paid internship placement known as cooperative education. So there's loads of different companies you can go on. I know other people in the course went on, went to Glass Lewis, GCAS, Paddy Power, but I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to work with Stryker. So Stryker are a medical devices company that are in Cork in Ireland. And I got to work in the supply chain and logistics center of excellence as their co-op student. So although we were working remotely for nine months, which did bring us challenges, I got an insight into how we could impact the company, the software and different systems that were used. So I got experience in systems such as SQL and Microsoft Power BI. As well as that, I got the opportunity to be in a project that was about key performance indicators. So this was using the data skills we'd learned in college. I had to collect all the data, pull it through the system and then create dashboards each month. So this is really important for the company and there's a lot of responsibility to be given as well. So I suppose as well, the final year project is definitely something that really interested me as well. And I knew I always wanted a statistics project, so I was lucky enough to get text mining. So text mining can be defined as the process of gaining new information from different text sources. So for tweets, media articles, restaurant reviews, anything with text in it you can use. So the data set that I've been using so far, it consists of tweets about people's experiences with six different US Airways airline companies and if their experience is positive or negative. So I have the text of the tweet and I'm able to draw analysis from that. So you can see on the screen, it's actually one of the word clouds that I created. So in a word cloud, if the word appears really frequently in the data set, it's going to appear large in the word cloud. So we can see the different um, airline names such as American Air, Southwest Air, US Airways appear really big, which is to be expected as these are the airway, airlines that are used. And the word flight also really appears because it's a data set about airway, airlines and flights. So it is to be expected really. Um, as well, so here you can see the different sort of words that we could, that come up in the data set. So it can be classified into different categories. So there's eight categories, but I've just shown four today. So we can see like there's positive words, there's words associated with disgust, with fear, with sadness. And I suppose positive words then, so we can see different sort of words are like love and hope, which to be expected. And then the word flying is also classified as a positive word. But if you look in the fear category as well, you can see that the word flying is actually associated with fear as well. So this is to be expected because some people do have a fear of flying. So it probably wouldn't be a good experience if you were flying and you really hated it. So as well as that, we can see words like change is words associated with fear, delay as well. And delay also appears in sadness and disgust because you probably would be fairly sickened if your flight was delayed. So 
as well, you can calculate the sentiment score. So what we can do is you can assign score of one to a positive word, negative one to a negative word, and zero to neutral words. So the sentence I've chosen to just show you is, the shoes were very comfortable, excellent quality, but 150 euro was a horrible price. So it's really hard to tell at the beginning if this is a positive or a negative sentence because there are some positive features and some negative. So if we remove the neutral words, so words such as the, shoes and were, because they don't really offer us very, information, very much information. And then if we assign scores of one to the positive words, so words such as very comfortable, excellent, and then negative one, like horrible, then we end up with a score of two. So as the score is positive, we can conclude that this is a positive sentence. And just to show you some of the different sentiment scores that are available in software that I'm using for the project, which is R Studio. So we can see there's actually a bit of difference between depending on what sentiment score you use. So for example, in the NRC sentiment score, we see that Delta is given a positive score, but in the Bing category is given a negative score. So this just shows how the different categories are associating words with different emotions if they're positive or negative, for example. So yeah, that's all I have to say, I suppose. Um, I just want to, if you have any questions, just let us know and as well, best of luck with your leaving certs and hopefully we'll be seeing you in UL come September. Yeah. Thanks very much for the opportunity. That was fantastic and good to see um, a bit of insight into your FIP because the students applying wouldn't, wouldn't really have any idea what that's about, so it's good to see it. Um, so next we have Ellie Fallon, who graduated in 2019, is now um, pursuing a PhD on our excellent data science PhD program that we have. So I'm sure Ellie will say a little bit about that, but also about her own course. So whenever you're ready, Ellie, you can unmute and, and share your slides and make it full screen. And just Great. as you're doing that, I remind everyone, our Q&A is, 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 is looking quiet. So if you have any questions, just stick in, stick in a question because we have people lined up here waiting to answer questions for you. So now's the chance to ask. Work away, Annie. I can see that perfectly. Perfect. You can hear me OK, can you? Yeah. Great, perfect. So hi, everyone. Welcome to the UL Open Day. Um, my own name is Eleanor Fallon or, or Ellie, and my the course that I would have done is, is Mathematical Science. And currently I'm a PhD student I'm still in the University of Limerick. So just a little bit of background about myself. I would have gone to primary school in Limerick in Skolita and then went on then to secondary school in Crescent College Comprehensive also in Limerick. And I suppose it was very much there that I realised that I, I really enjoyed maths. Um, I enjoyed doing the homework. I, I enjoyed working through solutions and everything. So it wasn't until I think I was in sixth year that I, I kind of decided that it, it made most sense to continue on and do maths. Um, in college and and that's exactly what I did. Um, so you might ask, well, why did you choose UL? Um, to be honest, I, I chose UL out of convenience. Um, when I was 18, I, I'd live, I've lived in Limerick my whole life. I wanted to leave. I wanted to go somewhere else, but it actually made most sense to, to stay in UL. And I'm quite glad that I that I did. I'm still there. Um, so, yeah, when I think back on, on my time in, in undergrad, um, I think back on Kemi Business School, I would have spent a lot of time down there um, doing uh, a lot of study with, with my friends, um, a lot of them in financial maths as well, which I'll, I'll touch on in, in a second. Um, also the, the UL arena as well, you can go to exercise classes, there's the gym, there's a swimming pool, you have the pavilion and the, the stables, um, great for kind of social life and, and food and everything. And also the really nice views, the really nice walks like UL is, is a lovely um, campus so I'm quite glad that, that I went there. So then math science then itself, um, it has a lot of different options that you can go into. Um, my particular favourite aspects to math science was, was calculus, so things like differentiation and integration. Then we had data analysis, so you're, you're shown how to work with data and how to analyse it experimental design and um, you were shown how to appropriately set up experiments and then advanced data modeling so things like clustering and applying um, statistics um, to data so you can see there that I, I very much took a kind of statistical route and um, you can take uh, as Kevin mentioned you can take the kind of more or more, a more uh, mathematical route 
And as he said, there there was a lot of overlap um, with financial maths, like some of my best friends that I'm still in contact with were in financial maths because there was so much overlap um, with a lot of modules with them. And then when you're in your third year of, of the degree, you go on co-op, so a work placement. My one was in analog devices. I was a reliability engineer um, intern. So the main project that I was involved in, um, what I had to do is I had to get devices and I had to um, go down to the lab and basically apply voltages to these devices and just basically see what happened. Uh, so I'd view those under the microscope, I'd write up the results, um, show pictures and, and graphs and everything, and then present these weekly then to the project lead. Um, other things that I would have done is I would have shipped items abroad, which really helped with my admin skills. And then I would map devices to communicate locations of, of things um, to colleagues abroad. So that really helped with my communication skills. So that was a great experience. And then when you're in your final year, um, as, as we mentioned, you, you do a final year project. So it's basically research. And my one was what makes a song popular. So I analyzed Spotify uh, data, the top 100 songs in the in the charts. And we, we were basically just trying to answer that question based on the features of, of the songs. And one of the things, um, just to show a, a quick graph of that, um, you can see there the, the X axis there shows energy. So that's the horizontal axis shows energy and then the vertical axis shows loudness and then those dots there represent songs so you can see as energy increases the loudness increases which would make sense in a song and that's why i really like statistics it very much explained things that that did make sense um and as i said it was my first exposure to research and it was here that i realized that i really liked research you have a lot of freedom to to look into things um you have a lot of um time to look into things and kind of learn learn different aspects. So for that reason, then I actually went on to do a PhD, which is mainly research. So I graduated from uh, mathematical science then in 2019. And in the same year, I started uh, my PhD, which is called Perceptions of Health Risk and Health Risk Communication. And one of the main things that we're doing at the moment is we're creating a workshop um, to basically um, show people how to communicate health risk and, and numbers in the media and the best way to do that. Uh, so at the moment I'm doing a lot of um, looking into the literature on training sessions and workshops um, with, with, with journalists. Um, I also would analyse a lot of data. So I've we've released uh, surveys in the past. One of them was in the Irish Examiner um, over the summer. So we analyse that data and uh, we're, we're writing that up. Um, I also give tutorials to undergrads, um, which which I really, really enjoy. So I've taught things um, from statistic, different statistics modules to coding in OR, and it, it's really, really enjoyable and it's a great exposure to, to teaching. Um, I also got to travel a bit um, back more so in 2019 before COVID. The last two years now we haven't really gotten to travel, but Back in 2019, I would have gone over to Cambridge and hopefully again now in the summer, I'll get to travel again. Um, we are doing international research, so I'd get funding for, for three months to, to go abroad and to work with someone. So that's very exciting. And I also did a placement in, in the CSO, the Central Statistics Office. So that was two summers ago. Um, so it, it really like exposed me to, to different areas. Um, very very uh, enjoyable and all this was was made possible from all the skills that I, I picked up in in math science um, and the opportunities that I faced so just here then is just just to finish off this just shows a couple of pictures again pre-covid this was back in in 2019 so our PhD program we're, we're with um, many of the new CD students as well so it's a very cohort based um, program so there's a lot of us there uh, you, you have a lot of support there and it's brilliant you people who are also doing PhDs and, and going through stuff that you're going through. So it's, it's brilliant. Um, if you want to know more about that, that PhD, you can go on to datascience.ie. And if you have any questions about it uh, for me, my, my email is there, elnor.fallon at ul.ie. And I'll just leave up that email there. So elnor.fallon at ul.ie and my LinkedIn then is, is Ellie Fallon and I'll leave it there. So thanks for listening and I'll be happy to answer any questions if you want to reach out to me at any time. Thanks for that, Ellie.
Um, so yeah, so again, Ellie would, was in the maths science degree, so that, that's maths common entry. We have then Karen Sullivan next, who did economics and maths, so that again is also maths common entry. Karen graduated in 2019 and is now working for First Derivative. So Karen, yeah, I can see those slides, so if you unmute yourself, you can speak away. Perfect. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Lovely. Um, so welcome to our open day today. My name is Karen O'Sullivan and I currently work for First Derivatives, but I am a graduate of Economics and Mathematical Sciences. Um, I graduated in 2019, so I've been like two and a half years working for FD now. Um, as opposed, or with reference to like my background, all from Limerick as well, just like Ellie went to Milford, went to Castro College. And when I was in kind of secondary school, I realized like economics and math, like these are kind of like the things, like I can see math is very useful. I'm not very good at it, but I can see that it's very useful and will like be really helpful in my career. Whereas economics, I loved, I just loved, you know, how different aspects of the economy, the world, population, how the, these all kind of link together. So I thought that this could be a really like interesting route to follow um, into like my college. So I kind of like looked around at a couple of like college courses in Ireland, like there's, there's one in UCD, there's one in Galway, but I think the one that gave UL the edge was just co-op placement. It just seemed to be such an integral part of like a college experience and it gives you so much like just a leg up when you're applying for grad jobs then, like you have eight months industry experience, professional experience, how to act in a workplace and you know, just stuff to talk about about that. Um, so yeah, obviously it's hard to kind of figure out what you want to do at this age, but I thought give, pick something that gives me like a good backing, a good base, like statistical skills, logical thinking, all very important. And then pick something that you love, so economics. So that's how I ended up in economics and math. Um, so when I started, you just went straight into it, but now of course the easier common entry, and then you can decide what you want, which really is even better because you you know can try out a lot of different modules, figure out which one you want to do, and then choose the path that you know. Uh, you want to do it with like proper certainty. Um, so in my time in UL, like the course is split like completely 50-50 between the two different schools. So like you do the economics with the Kemi Business School and you do the maths with like the engineering department. Um, so you get two completely different ways of thinking that are developed over the four years and really like they, they blend really well into each other. Like it kind of like assignments in college it's all about kind of like getting the edge and like having something additional to what is just done in the lectures. And I found that like doing economics and math really helped this because I was able to take like economic theory into some math assignments like where applicable and, you know, the same like mathematical logical thinking into economics assignments. Um, two very cool research projects that I carried out while I was in UL. Um, I did my FYP, my final year project on like economic determinants of airline revenues. Um, which was very cool. Like I looked at like, you know, basic things like GDP and like, I don't know, uh, corporation taxes and stuff like that of where the air airline was domiciled and other things like, you know, the trend in oil prices and stuff like that. And was able to like make a predictor on like revenues of different airlines based on those factors. Um, and then another project that I did in second year under Stephen Kinsella, um, which I just thought was very interesting. I like ran an economic model of like GDP, unemployment rates of different European countries and like tracked that to like their happiness scores and saw like what variables had more of an impact on the happiness of different European countries. Um, probably the funniest thing that I found in that project was um, Greece. The, um, even though their unemployment rates were so much higher than every other European country, they were still remained the happiest all of the time. So I don't know what they're doing down there, but it seems to be working. Um, so my co-op placement in UL, um, I went on in third year and I went to GCAS. So GCAS are a derivative of like GE and what they specialize in is kind of, is like aircraft leasing and like engine leasing to like the world's biggest airlines. Um, so GCAS, well, back at the time were the biggest aircraft, like by the number of planes that we owned and that we like leased out. I'm not really sure what it is now though, but, um, it was fantastic experience to work for such an international company um, it was really cool like we had like daily calls with all the teams across the world so you'd be like taking in kind of like the stuff that they did in America and Asia and trying to like track it all in together um, specific things that I did while on co-op like I, I was given a load of like you know these are all the aircraft and engines that are in demand right now make a model to forecast what's going to be in demand in five years time 
so that you know GCAS knows like what engines to buy now, what's going to be popular down the line. It was it was a really good experience and gained a lot of like professional and kind of corporate exposure that was really helpful then when applying for grad jobs. Uh, so currently I work for First Derivative and um, we are a financial and tech consulting company based out of Newry in Northern Ireland. But uh, the reach of the company is insane. Like we have offices all over the world from like America, Canada, Ireland, England, all across Europe, all the way over to like Hong Kong, Australia, and like loads of opportunities to travel within that. And um, so I applied to the grad program when I was in my final year. Um, and I found the interview process and everything was really easy, given all the skills that I'd learned in UL, like everything, every question that they asked, I had like, a, oh, well, I did this in my course, I did this in my co-op, I did this in my FIP. Um, so that was very easy to just transition into work. Um, my, with the project, so like as consultants, we like, you know, get placed onto different projects and different banks. So my first project, I got to live in London and Spain with Santander Global Bank and what we were working on was um, like machine learning and um, kind of taking data from the compliance team and like making artificial models that artificial intelligence models that would like alert for instances of like inappropriate behavior or insider trading or market abuse from the traders so like we were taking like their phone conversations their emails their text messages like bringing all this into a model and then like like um one of the P or one of the FYP girls was saying it's like text analysis and like certain words alert to certain things. So that's what I was doing with Santander. Uh, currently, I am on placement with Bank for America doing trade settlements. So like equities trades in the market, need to settle, real fast paced environment, really, really good fun um, and a real kind of like fast paced exposure to like this is the trading floor and you have to make them all settle. Um, but given all the training that we were given in SD and my background from UL, it was very, it's all, it's all been a really easy transition and all really good fun to work for now. So thank you very much for listening. Um, if you have any questions, there's my LinkedIn and my email and yeah, best of luck with your leaving start and your, I don't know, transition into UL if that's what you choose to do. Thanks very much, Karen. That was great. So next uh, we have Michael Keyes, who did the maths and physics degree, which now is part of the maths common entry and also the physics common entry. He graduated in 2018 and he's working for on semi now. So Michael, you can share your slides. And mm -hmm. OK. Should be able to see that. OK. Yep. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Michael Keyes. I did uh, maths and physics um, some years ago now in, in UL, um, graduated in 2018. Um, there it is. And I currently work for On Semi in Cork, uh, who, who make uh, or who design silicon photomultipliers. I'll talk a bit more about that in, in a few minutes. Um, so why, why did I decide to go to UL and why did I decide to do maths and physics? Well, I I'm not actually from Limerick, but I'm from the county and I had I spent a lot of time in Limerick um, and I I like I liked you well and I, I knew as well it had a, a really good reputation and uh, I'd, I'd heard about the co-op program, which as you've heard in the last few minutes, we in, we spent half a third. We spent half a third year um, on work placement in, in an actual company um doing paid work that's meaningful and relevant um so it's so that gives that gives you a really good experience of of work in in the field that you're actually studying so i that was one of the main reasons that i that i thought ul would be a, a good place to go and why maths and physics i've always for for a very long time i'd always uh had a desire to learn you know how the universe works and I'd, I'd had a love of, of mathematics uh, going back to nearly primary school. Um, and I had formed an appreciation for for a, a mathematical description of the world, you know, like um, for for example, how everything could maybe be described in terms of geometric shapes. That was kind of where, where it started. And then as I got older, I was learning about how their equations describing the laws of physics and I, I found it fascinating. So for me, mathematics and, and physics was a very nice um, intersection of of the, the ways I like to see the world. 
Um, so what, what uh, once I was there, what, what did I love about doing maths and physics? So there, um, so yeah, we, we did get to learn the, the theory behind intre interesting mathematical techniques and, uh, and also apply them to real physical problems. So as, as I mentioned at the start, you know, it's 50% maths modules, 50% physics modules, then the maths modules, you're learning what may seem like very abstract techniques, but then possibly in the same day you're you're in a physics um, physics class and, and uh, seeing how they're actually applied in the real world or well applied to to, to physics. Uh, so for example, we had ordinary differential equations which linked up with classical mechanics, um, partial differential equations which linked up with electromagnetism and linear algebra which linked up with quantum mechanics. Uh, um, my final year project, so yeah, in, in fourth year, obviously I was working on a kind of research project. Um, so what I was working on was, um, was the etching, it was electrochemical etching of indium phosphide. So indium phosphide is, is, um, a semiconductor material and there, when it's, um, when it's placed in certain chemicals and a voltage is put in it, then then you can get some really interesting formations, um, like pores form in the in the material. And so I was working on trying to model that using using Python, uh, the Python programming language. Um, so I, yeah, the the whole idea was to create a model based on simple principles, but but try to uh, try to produce results that were in agreement with reality. Uh, what I ended up with was was an, a, a basically a picture like this. So yes, it's animating a bit fast, but uh, yeah, basically you start with a spherical hole in indium phosphide, and then it just as it as time moves on, you build up what looks like a tetrahedron and then if it kept going, if the the ends of the tetrahedron would start um, pushing out in 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 more porous shapes. Uh, so yeah, it was it was based on really simple principles, but uh, I think the the results were quite elegant. So again, that shows the the power of of applying fundamental mathematical principles to describing real phenomena. And yeah, so I I had it, it was built on what I had learned about maths and physics in my my three previous years at UL. Um, my co-op placement in third year, I was working with Sensil Technologies, uh, working on, as I was saying, silicon photomultipliers, which, which are called SIPMs. Uh, so these are sensors that, that uh, can detect and count photons. So pho photons are uh, the, the smallest possible unit of light um they're uh, a consequence of of quantum mechanics wave particle duality um so light is a wave but it comes in these little packets called photons and it turns out that that fact is actually very useful um so with with a, with silicon photomultiplier you can actually count photons which is kind of mind bending when you think about it and that has practical applications for PET scanners used in hospitals and also light detection and ranging LIDAR for self-driving cars or driver assistance in, in ordinary cars. Um, so when I was there, I was, I was applying my statistical knowledge from UL, from doing maths to questions on the uniformity of the device performance. And while I was there, I also made some improvements to the in-house analysis software to, to try and make things more efficient. Um, oh yeah, this is just a, a screenshot from a from one of the LiDAR demos. Um, it's a still, but you can see the, the full video if you go to, to this site here. So I, I'll just leave that up for, for a second. So you can see um, the, these two guys, they're, they're walking away from the, the sensor and um can you can see then this this is kind of a, a heat map showing how far away 
things are so you can you can see the two guys uh, here and as they walk further away the color changes but as I said this is only a still image but you can see the full thing here um, can't really see it but it, it builds up a 3D point cloud so you can actually see in real time that the computer knows exactly how far away everything is and that's based on send, sending out a laser pulse and when it when it's reflected you you know when it's reflected and how many photons come back uh, so that's that's the practical use of of SIPMs for lidar um, and now my my current employment is at OnSemi which is again Sensel Sensel was acquired by OnSemi uh, so I I was hired back there which which I was very happy about so my role today is is as a device physics engineer um, which which involves mathematical slash physical modeling of what's going on in the device uh, to to predict performance you know we're always trying to improve the photon detection efficiency how you know if if a certain number of photons land on the sensor how many of them will you actually get in your output on average we're always trying to improve that um, and then so Based on based on my models, I'm able to establish experiments to run on actual silicon, and then I, I I'm involved with actually getting those experiments run at the at the factory and getting the the devices probed, tested, and yeah, so sometimes I actually get to personally test the devices in the lab once they're completed, um, and check check if the predictions made sense. That was more often pre-COVID, but lately I've started being able to do that again. Um, and as I say, I'm involved with getting stuff going at the at the fabrication facilities, uh, which means which means I'm in communication with them, and I do sometimes get to travel, or I did before COVID, and possibly will again. Uh, so I got to travel to Japan and and to New York. Uh, in, in 2019 and 2020, early 2020. Um, and yes, of course, the the, um, the company also uh, places a, an emphasis on teamwork. Uh, we did before COVID, we used to have regular team building days uh, every summer. So that's us on a, on a trip to a, a zip lining park. Uh, so it's not all it's it's not all work. There's there's plenty of play as well. Um, so that's that's it. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Um, Robert Guest is next from Applied Physics. Robert, uh, just make you aware of time. We might have to keep you to five minutes just because uh, Deepak, who's from ITD, who's hosting this, will have to be in another event at 12.45. So that's, uh, that's just keep an eye on that. OK, uh, sorry, one second. I'll just yeah. share my screen. That's perfect. So can you you can see my screen, can you? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Yeah. So oh, I'm gonna do that. Um, so my name is Robert Guest, and I do applied physics. So I'm currently employed as a project development assistant in Long Clean Energy, um, and I went to school in Versa Kane Community College in Tipperary. So the subjects that I liked in school were physics, obviously, um, and then math and chemistry. So. If you enjoyed physics in secondary school, then doing physics is, is a great option because it's it's basically just more of the same. It's obviously to a, a higher level, but you get a chance to do a lot of the same kind of stuff and it's it's a good flavor of it that you get to do in the Leaving Cert. Um, I also really enjoyed maths. So when you're in the course, like day to day, you're, you're constantly doing stuff like calculus and algebra. Like there is there isn't a single day that goes by that um, you don't end up doing stuff like that. So the next one is chemistry. There's not there's not a whole pile of chemistry, but I've done maybe four or five modules now at this point, and it was it was something I enjoyed in the leaving cert, and I've I've definitely appreciated the chance to to get a flavour of it um, in college as well. Um, what attracted me to UL? The campus was a big one, so there's there's a really big campus in UL, and there's a load of a lot of really really cool buildings and facilities. So it's it's just a great great place to go to college. And um, the clubs and socks. So there's there's every different society and club under the sun. Like if if 
you like doing karate or martial arts or skydiving, fencing, kayaking, GA, like there's literally anything you can think of. And if if there isn't a club, then you're able to start your own club if it's something that you want to do. And um, the third thing, which is a common a common thing that everyone likes about UL, is the fact that there's work experience. So you own work experience, and it's not just for a few months; it's it's for eight months. So it's it's a big chunk. And if you're doing physics, then you get paid as well, which is is really nice. Um, the next bit. So how I research courses. I just decided, sort of the the top five different fields that I'd I'd be happy to study. Number one was physics. I think number two was engineering, and three was three was mathematical science or something along those lines. So when you're filling out your CAO, it's just a good idea to figure out, OK, this is what I want to do. For, for me, it was physics. And then the next step is, well, what college can offer me the best course in this field? And for for all of them, to be honest with you, it was it was UL for me at least. So I, I chatted to my my maths teacher, my physics teacher, chemistry teacher, and they all they all recommended the courses at, at UL. Um, so I started in general physics and then I went on to applied physics. You can also do maths physics um, either. So the, the key skills for, for physics are problem solving and analytical skills. So the kind of stuff you're doing again daily is you're just you're given some sort of a problem um, that you then need to solve using your, your mathematical and analytical skills. And you, you develop these and then you can use them for um, a really exciting applications like nanotechnology and all that kind of the, the cool modern stuff um, and uh, there's there's just there's a lot of um, a lot of exciting applications for for physics um, after hours so accommodation um, I would advise if you can trying to get on campus accommodation at least for first year really makes a big difference or it, it did to me at least because it, it's so close to everything it makes it super easy to get to clubs and socks in the evenings get to lectures in the morning all that kind of stuff um, the sports facilities, so there's a great gym in UL. There's there's actually a couple of them scattered around the campus. There's swimming pool, sauna, climbing wall. There's just anything you could ever need, really. Um, and then clubs and socks. So I got involved in a big way in the UL Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Club. So it's it's a really great way of meeting friends. It's just just take a hobby that you already enjoyed or maybe pick a new one and just you go and it's like a, a pre-made group of friends. Um, so the last slide, uh, co-op. So I actually I've worked for three months um, on doing an internship just on my own steam in Long Clean Energy and I'm now going back on co-op. So I'll be going for my first day on, on Monday back after um, the autumn semester. But they're, they're an Irish developer in grid scale energy projects. Uh, there's a lot of lots of different places you can go on co-op if you're doing um, applied physics. I organized this myself because I was more interested in renewables, but you could end up working somewhere like analog devices where you'd be um, you doing stuff to do with silicon and fabrication most likely. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for listening. That's great. Thanks very much, Robert. That was very interesting and uh, Best of luck on your co-op. That sounds cool. Thanks. All right, I think that's everything then. Um, so thanks to all our speakers. You all did a great job, and I think you've 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 uh, given a, a really good impression of the different courses on offer. So I think that's it then. So as as others have said, best of luck to anybody listening in their in their leaving certs, and sure, hopefully we'll we'll see you in in September. And if you have any questions, um, even after this. You can always just go onto the UL website, look at the course you're interested in, and there'll be an email address for the course director. So you can just email them directly. Some of them have been here in the chat answering questions, but others who aren't here, um, you'll, you'll be able to find their information on, on the on the UL website. So thanks very much again and, and enjoy any of the other open day events that you're attending. <laughs>